What's up guys, it's your boy Damon and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Shouts out to Euphine Throwaway for being on the ball. As always, we got the data mine with some stuff and we're going to talk about each and every one of these things along the way. So, as we get into this, just wanted to let you guys know uh, they have some interesting things coming. A bunch of new skins. We will be getting an Epic Pass with the Assyria skin. I'll be showing you guys the skins indiv individually so you guys can see those and whatever one strikes your fancy, whether it's Queen Aether... Weird Sid or, <laughs> or you know, super hot Cecilia and Assyria. Um, I'm sure you'll find a way to get those. Now, I just don't know how the structure is going to be with these skins because normally they do an Epic Pass, um, but I don't know how they're going to format it because now with the Epic Pass, the Epic Pass will probably only have the Assyria skin in it. But then there will be a three-week Christmas event where I'd imagine we'll either be able to farm each of the individual skins or we'll be able to buy them outright. How we're going to be able to do that... I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. So after that disclaimer, let's go ahead and dive on in. So here, just a side note here, he said this Trace's data uh, is in there, but he said it's the same as some time ago that it was already inputted and it's still really incomplete. So he said it's not worth putting in here. So if you guys are wondering about Strays, especially with that animation floating around all over the place, uh, we don't have any like solid information on that. However, the next banner is going to be Assyria next week, and then DN is going to be on Christmas, uh, as well as the Japan uh, banners will be DN too as well, so we can knock out the repeat banners for DN. All right, so that's going to be done. Um, just so you guys know, the Christmas event is a repeat from last year. For those of you guys who weren't here for that, however, there are some new artifacts which we will talk about here in this video. Now, first and foremost, we got Blackwing Succubus Cecilia. Suck me dry says, blame me for all of your lust and infidelity. Now lie beside me uh, and dream of ecstasy. Okay, so... Um, the image, uh, there's an image of it here, but we're going to do you one better. Uh, we actually have the model view here, so you guys can actually see what this skin actually looks like in the game. So you guys can see this here, which is actually really dope. <laughs> so you guys can definitely appreciate this here. Uh, the next one up is we have the Master Gentleman Sid. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for all you Sid fans out here that uh like ninja turtle city is available even the squirrel has a suit on looks like he stole some goods as well what he has i have no idea but the, the squirrel just literally just disappeared i don't know what the squirrel oh there he is he's back all right so that's what that one looks like there now in terms of star of ezra aether so i know you guys joke a lot about trap aether but damn all right I I was expecting King Aether like in the, the the initial video intro, but yo they they doubled down with this and went all the way Queen Aether. All right, so this is Aether in a dress. All right, so for those of you guys who wanted that Aether in a dress, you got your dream. All right, it came true. And then last but not least, uh, Knight of the White Flowers of Syria is actually the one that's going to be part of the season pass. Uh, so Syria's Knight of White Flowers, and you guys can actually see that one right here. Uh, with this skin here, which is also one of my favorite. I'm definitely feeling the Assyria skin and definitely, definitely feeling the CC skin, but these two are hands down my favorite, and we're going to have a great time with those. Now, next up, we got uh, New Year Cookies, which is a new artifact. So this event will go all the way up throughout New Year's. And this is why I said it'll probably be one skin a week that we could probably farm throughout the event, right? So when the Christmas event starts, you know, we'll, next week, right, um, with Assyria and then, you know, Deanne will be on Christmas. Throughout that, we'll probably, I'm thinking we'll probably be able to farm or just buy the skins with like 900 crystals per skin uh, or however they're going to set that up. But last year when we did the Christmas artifact, we had a, what was it called? Card of Small Miracles, okay? And that one increased the XP that you received by 5%. It was a farming artifact. However, this one is a little bit different. Uh, so this one is New Year Cookies. And that one will be this artifact that you guys can see here. First one uh, up. And you guys can check this out. Raz got a little reindeer going on. We got some ornaments with Aether and I don't know who the hell that is. Probably Mercedes. Uh, but that's the deal with that one. <laughs> and what this one does is it recovers health of all allies by 10% of the start of the battle. Amount recovered increases proportional to the target's max health. Health. Um, yeah, I don't know where the heck you would even use that. Maybe PV, maybe maybe PVE, but I don't know what other artifact you would even remotely sacrifice. To me, this seems like an artifact you would probably just collect and probably max because it's available during the event. The next one up is the artifact, the Resolute Soldier series, which is a series of paintings. Uh, comprising the final work of Master Triviano, portraying various scenes of the Archdemon War in the utmost detail. 
designated as the National Treasure Number 28 of Ezra. Um, so it's a rarity four star increases the defense and effectiveness of all allies by 5% with a maximum of 10%. Does not overlap with an artifact providing the same effect. Now I like this artifact a lot more uh, than the other one. I feel like this one at least has a little bit more utility. However, don't be surprised if these artifacts do offer uh, bonuses to farming AP or not really AP per se. Well, yeah, probably AP and event currency when the event does drop and last but not least in terms of artifacts we have unfading memories uh, which as you guys know Deanne is coming back so Deanne always kept it dried forgive me not in her pocket watch um, shimmering with bright blue light as if it were picked only a day earlier uh, images uh, we'll show you guys that here it's a five-star artifact that's probably going to come on the end banner and heals all allies by four percent maximum of eight percent after using a non-attack skill so this is going to be this artifact and oddly enough these watches last year i think were what you actually use to uh, imprint Basque. Uh, so don't be surprised if Basque actually shows up again some way, somehow in the side story with the availability to farm. So for those of you guys who weren't here for Basque, I'm pretty sure you might have an opportunity to get Basque as well. Um, but this, this picture I think proves that <laughs> Basque might be Aether's dad though. <laughs> Just say it. Just say it, man. Just say it. Just say it. Bags might be atheist dead, but this is that, and uh, that's the five star artifact that's going to be coming along with, um, you know, the rest of the artifacts. Now, as we get into the rest of the data mine, as you guys know, uh, Benevolent Roman is coming. He's a very, very interesting kit. And we're going to get into this here uh, just for a little bit. Not going to talk too much about it. He's going to be a four-star Taurus. Uh, in terms of his camping lines and all that stuff, uh, you guys can check that out on your own. Uh, his devotion is attack percent. His self-devotion is effectiveness. And his camping topics are realistic and criticism. His skill one uh, is mana arrow attacks the enemy with a concentrated mana with a 35% chance to activate mana burst. Mana Burst actually attacks all enemies, decreasing combat readiness by a random amount between 10 and 50%. Now, if you sober in this, this increases the chance of activating Mana Burst to 100%, so it's guaranteed to proc. Now, the kicker with M.O. Roman is that he reduces um, the effect of decreased combat readiness buffs by 80 to 100% if you max him. So if you max Mola this passive, you cannot reduce his CR. So wherever he's at in the battle is where he's going to be, period. All right. So this could be a hard counter to a lot of things, uh, especially since his multipliers are really, really low uh, in terms of like his S1. Like his S3 is OK, but it's really going to depend on his space attack if you're going to use him for damage. But I feel like he's more of a support mage. Um, but with that, I mean, it's just... I feel like the way that you would position him is really going to be around this S1 and not necessarily the S3, and I'll tell you guys why. So with his S3, he attacks all enemies with condensed mana with a 60% chance to silence for two turns. And then when you upgrade it, he uh, attacks with a 60% chance to silence for two turns before dispelling one buff. Now, I don't know if they're going to change this to where he actually has a dispel before the silence, right? Um, but either way, like, it's just kind of weird. Um, just with the low percent chance, right? Even though it does go up here, it looks like it goes up to 75%. And then you have a cooldown reduction as well. But it's just weird because if the enemy does pop immunity, this S3 is fundamentally useless. Um, so again, if I was looking at building this character, you know, looking at a skill kit, I'd probably position around the S1. And it seems like he's probably going to be in a, in a fight a lot longer. So for instance, if I position around the soul burn here with the, you know, with the activating the mana burst with the CR pushback, um, then I could play with, let's say like an abyssal crown if I was running with some synergy, but I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on Roman right now because it just... His kit just seems weird. Uh, it seems really tough to position, but again, it'll probably take some testing. <laughs> whether or whether whether or not I summon for this guy is going to determine is, is going to depend on who the five star actually that's coming with him is going to be. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I like that he can't be pushed back in terms of CR, but I don't know, man. This dude's kid's super weird. But anyway, guys, all round Wanda is coming. I'm definitely excited about this. Definitely want to test her out with the two turn stun, uh, plus all the stuff. I just got to wait till dark days so I can farm all the rest of the dark mids that I need uh, so I can get that done. And then, you know, that'll be another video. In terms of the holiday event, 
We got a ton of stuff to get. We have necklaces, uh, scarves basically, uh, that come with a variety of sets that you can see here. And it looks like there's multiple. So a series, crowds, the scene is cars, Mercedes and Angelicas. I'd imagine if all of these scarves are variants of these stats here, um, this is probably a farm event where it gives us an opportunity to get a bunch of these. So they'll probably be different necklace I'm imagining maybe, but I don't know, we'll see. And then uh, also just like last year we had gear that we could farm as well. So it looks like we have the Code of Small Miracles here. It's a level 71 gear. Uh, main stat is defense, rarity is epic. And then you guys can see the substats here, which are pretty good subs for support. You got the weapon uh, with the speed, crit, attack, and health. Also a great weapon uh, if you guys need that. And then we also have uh, the ring here, which is an effectiveness ring. And But this one just has possible stats here. So might be good. You know, mostly good though, depending on how, how it rolls for you. But uh, the effectiveness ring is going to be up to you. And I don't know, man. I don't know. If it has speed, if, you know, if you can get speed on this too, then I think it could be really effective, but I don't have to wait and see how everybody's rings turns out. And then, of course, you got the Pollution Mercenary Sword, which I'm pretty sure is that one that you can farm out of the new side story. Uh, so there's that. And there's also going to be a new pet, the Client Teddy. So this is just a snowman who wants to find the young child who made him one snowy day. Due to Dr. Bear H. Watson's case, his request keeps being delayed. So he's a snowman, he's a battle pet, and the images, if you guys want to see this, um, is this guy. He actually looks pretty cool. I actually want this pet, you know? So um, if you guys are looking forward to getting more pets, <laughs> I hope you guys sense a little sarcasm there. But if you guys are looking forward to getting more pets, or specifically that one, that one will be available as well. Uh, but this is the data mine for the uh, content that's coming next week outside of Wanda, who will be here this week. Um, but Roman actually won't even be here for like another two weeks. Uh, so that's just a teaser and we'll actually be able to see Roman skin or excuse me Roman skills in game uh, Next week so you guys can be ready for that um, But with that being said guys, that's all I want to cover today If you guys got any questions comments concerns or anything about the patch that you guys you know want to know about or are curious about definitely let me know in the comment box as well Let me know in the comment box below and also, uh, let me know what skin you guys are most hyped about getting. You know what I'm saying? You guys going for that Aether, you guys going for, <laughs> for that Sid, uh, or you guys, uh, like myself, going more for the CC and the Assyria. Uh, let me know that in the comment box below as well. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, bringing you guys another video, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.